Hello, I'm Dr Tim Sandall and I'm back with you with another video and I'm here this time to talk about hand sanitizers and the dangers of some of the substandard products that are entering the market. So if you your job is to purchase hand sanitizers or you're simply a user of hand sanitizers then hopefully this video will contain some bits of interest. Um, so hand sanitization is the step uh, taken to um, enter public spaces at the moment um, and it's taken on this great importance during the coronavirus pandemic and effective hand sanitization is one of the key measures of COVID-19 safety uh, for reducing viral contamination. Now it's still the fact that hot water and soap is preferred but where those facilities are not available then hand sanitization is the next best thing. Now we've experienced a global shortage of hand sanitization products and this has led to new entrants coming into the market and this has partly been driven by the US FDA waiving some of the standards required for hand sanitization production in order to increase supply. Um, so the premise of hand sanitization I'm sure you know is that you have an agent that's um, suitable contains a suitable mixture of alcohol and water and a degree of water is needed because pure alcohols have limited effectiveness on the skin and they also evaporate very quickly and this results in low contact times and very kind of ineffective penetration of viruses and to inactivate them and bacterial cells in order to kill them. So typically we have mixtures of 60 or 70 percent alcohol with purified water and the addition of water is this factor that helps the diffusion through bacterial cell membranes or this inactivation of the viral genetic material. And also the formulation helps to um, improve the contact time by slowing down um, evaporation. So the biocidal function is a consequence of the key ingredients and this obviously varies according to different disinfectants but the World Health Organization has laid down some minimum requirements for a hand sanitizer. And these are ethanol at 80% volume by volume in an aqueous solution or isopropyl alcohol at a 75% weight by volume solution in an aqueous solution. Plus you need the addition of glycerol which is designed to stop the hands drying and to reduce incidences of dermatitis. Hydrogen peroxide to eliminate um, any presence of bacterial spores. So the glycerol is about 1.45% and the hydrogen peroxide at 0.125% so it's a safe level. Plus um, either sterile distilled water or some form of purified water. So we've got this shortage of hand sanitizers and to address this void then um, the FDA has altered some of the standards and this has also led to a number of different entrants coming into the market. So for example you've got some breweries providing um, alcohol to disinfectant manufacturers and you've even got um, oddities like the Louis Vuitton range um, switching some of their perfume lines into making hand sanitizers and these companies are legitimate and they are producing um, base products of suitable quality however there is a concern that some other companies entering the market are producing substandard products that are not efficacious so the FDA has issued a guidance note and this is a temporary enforcement discretion policy called guidance for industry temporary policy for preparation of certain alcohol based hand sanitizer products during the public health emergency and in parentheses COVID-19. This document was issued on the 27th of March then updated on the 15th of April then on the 1st of June and then most recently on the 7th of August all in 2020. So exemptions within this policy relate to formulation, labelling, adverse event reporting, registration and listing. 
Now, products used in surgery, such as for skin disinfection, which might you say chlorhexidine, are exempt from the guidance. And that, well, in other words, they're not included. The current standards need to remain in place. Um, so the FDA guidance did maintain the importance of using products um, that have the active ingredient still of ethanol or isopropyl alcohol, so you're not allowed to deviate from those things. And for safety reasons, it needs to continue that these alcohols are denatured um, and that the World Health Organization permissible ingredients are included and it is not permissible to add other ingredients like products that might alter the aroma because it's important for safety reasons that the alcohol still smells like alcohol to avoid say a child picking up the product and attempting to drink it or Donald Trump. Um, and the guidance also continues to say that um, no product should be marketed with inflated superiority claims and this includes any claim that the, the product can specifically inactivate the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the causative agent of COVID-19, because there's no agreed international standard and no testing protocols that will eliminate specifically this virus. But you can make claims to inactivate enveloped and non-enveloped viruses in general. So, relaxation of guidance, new entrants, Big shortage of supply, those involved in procuring products need to search the world to find suitable products. Um, the consequence of this is with uh, dangerous products entering the market. So in August 2020, the FDA has issued warnings about certain hand sanitizer products. And this generally falls into two groups, um, either because the products contain methyl alcohol or methanol, and this is toxic to human health, which I'll explain a little bit in a minute, or because there are sub-potent levels of alcohol, that is, alcohol below the 60% for ethanol or the 70% for isopropyl alcohol. It also stands that if a product had high levels of methanol, it would also be not very effective at killing microorganisms. Methanol tends to be used as a solvent, and it's been known since the 1920s that you can't really use methanol as a disinfectant. However, some unscrupulous, or to be fair, maybe ignorant, manufacturers are using methanol, it's otherwise known as wood alcohol, um, for hand sanitization products. And there's a flood of these that have entered the market. In fact, over 100 different products have been identified to date. And these products, which should be classified as adulterated products, are dangerous and toxic to human health. So the hazards of um, methanol are reactions with the skin, so you can get skin damage, but also poisoning by ingestion. So this may not be as uncommon as you, as you might think. Unfortunately, there's been some crazy advice about drinking hand sanitizers. Children can pick them up. And sometimes you have levels on the skin and then you, you know, put your hand in your mouth, for example. Um, so this can trigger where there's methanol contaminated products, nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision and even seizures. And in very, very serious cases, and it doesn't take that much methanol to ingest, permanent blindness, coma, permanent damage to the nervous system or even death. Um, and this happens because the, the liver digests alcohol. And when the liver digests alcohol, there's an enzyme called um, alcohol dehydrogenase. And whereas ethanol is broken down to acetate, relatively harmless, um, methanol by the same enzymatic mechanism is broken down into formic acid. And um, this is also um, toxic. It also stands there are some products also that are substandard enter in the market that are made from uh, one propanol, which again is not the same as isopropanol. Um, so it is also a substandard and potentially toxic product. So we had this flood of alerts from the FDA, um, and this is particularly with partial or wholly manufactured ethanol hand sanitizer products, and there's over 100 warnings by the FDA, which resulted in bans, seizures, and uh, import bans as well. So you need to be very um, careful. 
So for those operating public spaces, let's say your job is as a procurement manager, then it's important to assess the product you're purchasing. So what's the name of the product? What's the exact name of the active substance? You need to ensure that this is ethanol or isopropyl alcohol and it has the correct concentration or the percentage of alcohol present. You need to make sure that there are relevant instructions for use. You need to read the full formulation to make sure it won't cause dermatitis. You need to know who actually made the product, not who's supplying the product, but the actual name and address of the manufacturer. You need to look at safety and sustainability notices, disposal details, and also poisons information. There should always be clear safety instructions if someone was to ingest the product, for example. And all of these details should be verifiable from a certificate of conformance that should be supplied with the product. And this is very important to help minimise the subpotent or toxic products that have entered the supply chain. And things are not as easy as before due to the shortages and the need to expand globally in order to source appropriate products. And this is also useful for the members of the public who might be uncertain about a particular hand sanitizer product. So it is important that you still practice the other aspects of coronavirus measures. So number one, don't go somewhere. Number two, if you do go somewhere, then practice social distancing. Assume surfaces are contaminated and don't shake hands with other people. Ideally, wash your hands regularly with hot water and soap. If this is not available, then use a hand sanitizer. We've just spoken about the concerns around hand sanitizers. And the final one is wear a face mask if these measures cannot be adequately enforced. So anyway, on the subject of hand sanitizers, be cautious. That's all for now. I'm Tim Sandal. Please subscribe to my other videos on coronavirus or microbiology or health in general by subscribing to my YouTube channel. So thank you for your attention and please remember to continue to stay safe.